Yes, welcome to BPM. We've got Stalio. And I got my special guest today, Mr. Gary O'Valley. That's Gary with a with a H. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Gary, man. You know, you know, in England we call we call you Gaza, you know? Gaza. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. I'll oh, take you. What's going on, Gaza, man? Why why has got a H in your name? You got an H and an E too much. Yeah, it's it's the fancy, right? My parents wanted me to be fancy. That that's all it is. <laughs> Actually, saying that, what is your heritage? Because like I looked at your pictures, and I was like, okay, it could be Maui, it could be mm-hmm. I don't know, some some Mexican. Yeah, so I I have a really good mix, right? A okay. really good mix. So my my father is uh, is from the Caribbean, Dominican Republic. Oh, so delicious. nice mixed background there. Yeah, yeah. My mother is uh is Dutch from the Netherlands and Curacao. Okay. So I have a lot of family, you know, uh, a lot of German and uh and Dutch root and into the Caribbean as well, into Curacao. And then from there they found their way to the United States. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's awesome. That's awesome. So wait, you just mentioned off like you speak loads of languages, man. What you what are you speaking? Yeah, no, unfortunately for me, like I'm I'm looked at the black sheep in my family because I only speak two languages, right? My mother oh. speaks almost seven. My oh, aunts no. and uncles, they all speak four to five to six different languages. It's like a United Nations meeting when we get to <laughs> right? start in English because everybody speaks English. We'll move into Spanish, right, and yeah, Dutch, Spanish yeah. German and a little papiamento and somebody breaks out Italian and French <laughs> and back to English because they recognize most of the people don't understand what they're saying at the table. So they yeah. go back to English, right? And it kind of just jumps around all night for dinner, right? And hey, that's cool, man. I, I speak like, I think I'm on my fourth lap. No, I'm on my fifth language. Beautiful. Fourth, fourth language. Yeah, but I just like to learn languages. That's the thing. So yeah. I'm actually learning Italian at the moment, um, along with Portuguese, German, English. Uh, I did dabble in some Spanish back then, but that's gone. Japanese too. That That's gone as well. Japanese. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. go back onto them now. Stay with it. You lose yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Um, immersion. Is it immersion, immersion. Mm-hmm. When you when you live in a country and you're basically around that, you know the, the language and stuff. You learn it quickly, but once you're not speaking anymore, you 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 use it. No, you don't use it. You lose it. That's that right. right. That's, That's right. right. Okay, so where are you punching out of? What what are you in America? Uh yeah. So I'm out of uh, I'm I'm out here in New York, right? Specifically on Long Island in New York. Is that like an island? A separate? Because I, I don't know. Yeah, is it... It's more of a peninsula. You know, it's just a little break off of. It's not separate by itself. But, you know, they, they, they like to claim their own independence. So they call it Long Island, right? <laughs> is, that, is that like the East Coast? The East Coast, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, was it was Family Guy recorded there? No, that's is that Rhode Island? Rhode Island. Yeah, that might be Rhode Island, Massachusetts. <laughs> you know, the Family Guy. They're, they're, they're a little further up north. And I also understand that you guys speak the clearest, like, the closest English to us, mm. to the to the British, yeah, right. yeah. Well, at least Boston, and this Boston, northeastern yeah. area of uh, yeah. New York, uh, United States, they speak the closest Brit or oh, the English to us. I guess it was like the first place we settled, or well, not me, but these guys. Yeah. Um, and then and then like you know, <laughs> we offered you guys the English language, and then yeah. the Irish came over and started messing everything up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah that's about right. That's about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. About your journey, man, because I read your blog, um, your bio, sorry, your blog. Do you have a blog? No, 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 no blog just yet. All right. I read your bio and I've, I was fascinated. You're, you're an inspiration. Thank so you. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey um, and, what, and how you got to your journey, actually? What made you think to yourself, okay, that's what I'm going to focus on now? Sure. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Alistadio. Um, so for me, uh, it was really a matter of, you know, just kind of continuing what I've always seen as a, as a young person. Mm-hmm. I was very fortunate in my, in my, you know, beginning formative years, I was able to watch someone who cared enough for their family and community enough to affect change in it. Yeah. And for me, that was my mother. My mother was a community activist here in, in New York, here in Long Island. And what she wanted to do was make the area better for her children. And she recognized the only way to do that was to also make it better for everyone. Yeah. So as I started to see her do these things as a young person, as a child, 
it, it made immediate sense to me. I said, man, this little tiny little woman is creating all of this amazing change and positive, you know, uh, uh, atmosphere for everyone in the community. Why on earth aren't more people doing this right now as a child, you don't really understand the dynamics of the world. So you just see that you just see it happening. As I started to get older, I just kept implementing that at every stage of my own life. So as I entered elementary school, high school, college, the working profession, uh, as I started to, you know, uh, get married, have children, spend time in my community, I just kept giving back and always giving back. You know, that's the thing about our communities. Done well, we become lifelines for our communities. So I recognized I was a lifeline for my community. So I kept just giving and giving and giving. And like I was telling you earlier, before we came on, my children have just graduated university. I am free. Congratulations. Right? <laughs> so time and energy have come back to me. Not yes. my money because I'm still paying for their education. Yeah, yeah of, course, right? of course. But time and money have come back to me. <laughs> and as such, I recognized, you know, I, I was very fortunate. I was very fortunate to have a really good run personally and professionally. And I was thinking, why aren't more people having these same results? Why are more people happy and very successful and wealthy and changing that dynamic in their life and their family? And I obviously know the answers. Um, and that's when I said, all right, let's start to do more for others, but in a bigger level, at a bigger space. Let me write this book. Let me get into the public, uh, the social media, internet space and start to reach a larger audience so I can have a bigger impact. And that's where I am at this moment. You know, so how did you... How, how did you give back? What did you offer the community? Sure. So for me, um, first and foremost, time, right? My, my time, my expertise. I, am, I, I, I let people know and I, I introduce myself as an author, an activist, and an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. In the entrepreneur space, I've been there for about 25 years now, you know, building my own businesses, building businesses for others at the six and seven figure level. So at that point, when I think about healing black and brown communities, our communities, mm-hmm. I know that the problem is financial. If yeah. you do not have financial stability, you can't think of any other problem, any other thing, because you just want to feed your children. You just want to yeah. keep the lights on. You just want to have a, a, a house to sleep in. So I recognized that was the space that I could give back immediately. All of my knowledge, all of my expertise, my wisdom, I can give that back and show people how to develop their own very successful, profitable and sustainable businesses. Hmm. I mean, like the one thing I've noticed with the, the black community and actually, you know what? I'm going to say something that I don't normally say now. Hmm. Oh, I, I, I kind of feel like, like for a long time, I was like, yeah, man, Black people got it bad. We got it bad and we're struggling. We're doing, you know, we got it really bad. And it, and it's yeah. everyone else's fault. I start to lean towards the idea that it's our own fault. Mm. And that's that's not like me because normally I'm like, no, no, we're the victims. Because I just started studying at university. And there's a couple of guys in there, obviously, from our background. Yeah. And their attitudes, I'm like, and I, and I had to quickly jump in and say, hey, guys, guys, listen, this is a chance, man. Take the chance. But the attitude they had was like, Oh, what am I doing here? I got better things to do. I was like, you actually don't. This is mm-hmm. what you should be trying to do and trying to get your future in order so you can help your next generation, your kids. That's right. So, um, you know, what I was going to say is we basically have like a crab in a barrel kind of mentality in it where we try and, you know, one tries to make it up and they're always trying to drag them back down and stuff. So why, are, apart from that, why are we like that? What Can you add anything to that? Sure. You know, I I really appreciate that because that's a problem that affects our community. And it's one of the way it's one of the things that maintain our current levels of of poverty and the lack that exists in our community. Um, The main reason that crab in the barrel bucket mentality. Right. Um, We continue to define ourselves by the definitions of others. And because of that, We hate ourselves. We're envious of ourselves. We don't want to help ourselves. We want to do these things individually. Um, We don't find that our collective growth is the best thing. Uh, And these are these are things that were taught to us. You know, we were taught to hate the color of our skin, to hate our hair, to hate the ones that are next to us and look like us. Right. Don't just hate black, hate brown, hate yellow, hate red. Mm -hmm. Separate them all is, is what it is. It's it's just a it's a, it's a tactic, right? A European tactic. And especially here in the United States, we saw it through Jim Crow, right? And, mm, yeah. and that level of slavery and segregation. 
Um, that's a tactic that's purposely implemented. And for us, we keep playing that game. Yeah. And because of that, we are dividing ourselves further. When I speak, I talk about healing black and brown communities because I want us to recognize we don't have to separate each other. We should always celebrate our cultural differences, always. Yeah. Because that's our beauty. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to making way and being successful and navigating the world that we're in, we have to do that together. We can't mm-hmm. try to do this thing separately because it leads to our own separate demise. Yep. And I am not doing as well as you, but as long as you're not doing as well as me, I'm not so mad about it. Yep. Right? It's almost like I, I hate you privately, quietly. I'm just not going <laughs> to say it. You know? yeah. And it's a terrible space to occupy. And because mm-hmm. we keep defining ourselves by the definitions of others, well, I hold you to someone else's standard instead of a better one for our own. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, that's a huge problem, obviously. And we need to overcome it because, pff, well, we're never going to make it. And I also don't, I don't think like you, for example, to me, I look at you and I think, black guy, I saw your pictures. Like, okay, he looks, he's got some multicultural mix going on there, but black guy, you know, Obviously, there's other black people who won't look at that. The, um, the knowledge that you've got of the mixtures. I just look and think, if the police stop you, I always look at it like this. If you meet the KKK on a country road somewhere, right. and they're going to acknowledge that you got some European in you, they're not going to do that. They're going to lynch you the nope. same as me. They're going to look at us both and say, lynch them both. That's right. That's what I say. And uh, there's no point like separating us like black and brown to me we're yeah. all brown we're just different shades of brown actually like black, right. i don't even like the word black to even though the title is black up lips you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> they told me to do it they told me to do it. i'm the victim <laughs> you know but when we when we start to recognize that yeah you know what you're right mm. we have the same experience and yep. because of that we should join our force and our effort because it's going to make our outcomes better yeah. See, part of our problem is it's twofold. One, self-inflicted wounds, certain yeah. things we do to hurt ourselves. The other, systematically imposed limitations. That's yeah. governments, that's agencies. We don't have control over that. We can't do anything or it's not that we can't do anything about it. It's just a much harder fight. Yeah. But the self-inflicted part, oh, we can change that right away. Yeah. We don't have to be unruly. We don't have to fight each other. We don't have to have the violence in our communities. We don't have to sit there and, and run down our communities. We don't have to beat up and destroy our communities. Yeah. These are where we can create change that immediately affects us in a major, in a major way. Yeah. Um, I, know, I know one group of people we have to get on board, though. The Asian people, man. Yeah. I never understand why they're never really with us, you know. I think it's yeah. because they kind of share in the whole, like, European white privilege kind of thing. They kind of they like, definitely do, and and they've been strategic about it. You know, they use tactics to get around, and and no one notices. You know, they get away with it. It's like yeah, you know, um, I think what's his name, Joe Biden, just signed something to um, his legislation or into law that you know, yeah, allowed. something like Asian hate bill, yeah, or yeah. something like right. You know, we've been we've been suffering that for years, but no one's where's anything. our bill? <laughs> we've got That's no it. bill. Yeah, so so they're doing good, but we really need to like get them on our side. It's about to help us out. Because we've yeah, learned a lot know, from the Asians. You know, I, I've been watching this entire, uh, this this latest episode of the new Negro on the block, right? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it, it was us for a while. And now it's them, right? And yeah. they're being beaten up and treated poorly and, you know, uh, discriminated against. They're just the new, and, you know, I use the word Negro, obviously, yeah. there's another word to put in there, but they're the yeah. new one on the block. Yeah. And as such, they're starting to experience the same treatment that we have, obviously, to a yeah. much smaller level, yeah, yeah. Much smaller level, but they're starting to recognize it. And as such, a lot of their community is starting to recognize, hey, we are the same. Yeah. Hey, let's put these things aside and get on the same page. And oftentimes mm-hmm. it takes events like this to recognize, you know what, we are more alike than we are apart. And we yeah. should start working and concentrating on that as opposed to the other. And that's what we're starting to see now with the, uh, the, the, the Asian conversation as it's happening now. But you're right. There was a lot of uh, a privilege that they took advantage of, that mm-hmm. they built their communities in our they built their communities in our communities and around the world. And they took complete advantage of not having to be discriminated against the same way. Yeah. And they didn't necessarily step up and become our champions during that time. Mm-hmm. They are now experiencing that and they are asking for us to step up and become (laughs) their champions in this time. 
I'm not mad at you. <laughs> just as long as you're willing to, you know, you know, pay back. On the other side. <laughs> yeah. Right? I'm happy to step in and help you out. Just once it's done, please remember this and don't ever forget it. So we don't ever have to do these things separately again. I don't know if they're going to remember it, to be fair. They'll take yeah. a help. <laughs> and I after know. that, they'll be like, when they're back on the good side, they'll look, let's be like, sack them guys. Is that who? Who, who, who are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, I see that I understand that you're one of your main like topics is to help women of color. Yeah. Because they're proper disadvantaged. Let's be fair, the, the women of color have got the hardest, the mm-hmm. hardest. They, they, let's be fair, they hate themselves because yeah. they always try to look like somebody else. Not all of them, but a lot of them. You know, they, they're never getting the, I mean, they're really educated. That's the thing I, I, where education is concerned, right. I think they're the most educated people on the planet. Yep. you know which is great but they've never been recognized for that you know mm-hmm. they've never been recognized you know they just end up working in a, in a shop or whatever or wherever yep. having the babies so how do you go about helping these guys more yeah so in in that space there and that's exactly where i occupy right like i i told you i'm in the entrepreneur space 25 years i help uh coaches and business people and leaders in communities kind of build their own companies and businesses. And I especially concentrate with women-owned businesses, especially women of color. And it's because I know that when we, when I talk about, and and for my, for me, my mission is healing black and brown communities. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, the best way to make that happen is through the assistance and help of women. Women are at the front of all of the greatest movements on this planet, all of them. And when we look and think about the people who give back to the community the most. Again, it's women who do so. So if I put women in a position where they are financially independent, they will more likely help their community more so than the men that I have helped get into that space. And as such, I recognize, well, that's the group that I need to be working with them. If they're going to help heal our communities, I want to work with them most. In my book, I had mentioned it, at, I think it's in the, in the last chapter, right? Uh, Where have our Black leaders gone? I mentioned that women will heal the world because they have given birth to it. There is something about, there is, there is something about giving birth and bringing life to this planet. You hold it more dear and precious. Mm-hmm. It's not so easily disposed and distinguished and used and abused as it is in male society. So that's why I concentrate in those segments of our society, because I recognize we're going to get much more work and much more giving back from them. For me, my focus is growing forward and giving back. And I recognize that women of color, when they are helped, my goodness, when they turn around to help others, it is just so expansive and so quick. And just that's the community I want to be surrounded with. Yeah. So like, hey, it sounds like you got. So is this actually working in, in practice? Like they're living in a community where like all oh, this is actually functioning. It sounds great. I can Absolutely. feel it by the way you're talking that you live in that utopia, man, somewhere. <laughs> Send me your address, man. I'm coming. That's where I'm going to move to. Forget <laughs> Brazil. I'm going to live with you guys where everybody's happy, you know. Yeah, man. That sounds That's great. It. You know, for, for us, it's, and this is where I have conversations, especially with young people, right? When I have this conversation with young people, they're daunted by the idea of making change. They look at the world and they think, holy cow, this thing is so big. I, how can I possibly do anything to affect it? And I remind them gently. I think of my mother, this little yeah. tiny woman, creating change, bossing people around, making lives better for everyone, right? Yeah. And I tell them, listen, don't change the world change your world and watch everything start to reverberate out of that you will you will like a like a like a like a tuning fork you will shake and your message will go out to the world and it will draw your people exactly your people back to you it's unbelievable when you get into that space so just change your world the world will take care of itself wait there wait there wait there (laughs) you get more sunlight (laughs) <laughs> that was a great speech but i want to know when the sun comes in because <laughs> it's cold out there <laughs> I, know. I know and this, this is why we must work in our communities yeah, yeah sure. i am meeting up with you on a regular basis we are feeding each other supporting each other yeah. and when we separate 
we're going to take that same energy and feed and support those people who are around us. That yeah. it's just that simple. And yeah. as long as we, as long as we make it as simple as possible, because the world is life is as simple or as complicated as we make it. I choose simplicity because I recognize that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And in that space, my goodness, we can do so much with so little. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, now you say that simplicity. There's a year, there's a few years ago, I was telling my wife and I was like, look, we need to get rid of all our stuff. We need to get rid of everything. We need to live a simple life. If, was, if I was living alone still, if I was a single man and I was living alone, I'd have a, I'd have a, I'd have a room with mm-hmm. a mattress, maybe not even a mattress, just a, a quilt cover, yep. a pillow and a lamp with a, with a hat on it. And that's it. I would have nothing else. And that's simplicity. But I feel like you free then. It's like, I'm free here. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't know. Um, that, that, that's my idea. That's what I think. I, I prefer it. You take a look at that, that picture on the wall. I had that commissioned by a local artist here, you know, as a patron of the arts, right? You, you yep. give back to communities and they'll give back to you. I asked her to make me something minimalist in design because yep. it's who and what I am. She created something so simple just from our conversation. And that's exactly right for me, right? Just simplicity, easy. I don't need a lot. Very simple. For us, it's a landscape of us, a lot of black and brown bodies hanging out, getting mm-hmm. ready to take over the world. But yeah. that's fine, right? But th- th- that's what it is, right? Nice, easy, simple. Um, I prefer that level. It makes things so much easier to understand and then execute. Yeah, I'll tell you what I get from that picture. I feel like you got... Like if you move your head slightly to the right, yeah. yeah. Now I see one guy who looks like he's just turned away from giving something to the next guy. Mm-hmm. He's giving it to the next guy in the middle. At least two guys are giving him the whatever he needs to get. And yep. then it continue, continues all the way along. That's what I see. It's people giving. That's it. It's a great picture. That's it. And this is, just, this is just us in our atmosphere, talking, building, growing, just like yeah. we're doing now. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about like entertainers who, who seem to get out of the, the race and then just completely forget about everybody or everything they left behind? What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I find that to be some of my greatest disappointment. You know, yeah. when I think about our communities and the ways in which we can build and grow. Um, athletes and entertainers, mm. they are in a, in a space and they own a platform from which they can speak and reach the world. And if they only took the time to do that responsibly, if they only took the time to group together, like they have the resource already. So that's not Mm -hmm. a problem for them. If they just took the time to get together and have these conversations that have a bigger impact and then exert their influence on the market as a whole, our lives become exponentially better. We don't see that enough. We see that in bits and pieces, you know, a group here, a group there, two or three guys here, two or three, you know, women there, but not quite enough. If we start to see that collective movement, because that's where we excel, right? That's where we have been allowed to excel. I'll put it that way. We excel across all boards, but in the athletic space and the entertainment space, when we're given opportunity, we own that space. We run it, look across sports and you see us completely taking it over. As soon as they opened up entertainment, you start to see more and more of us taking it over the same way. So this is, this is one of our powers. This is one of the ways in which we can seriously benefit our community. I'm hoping that more athletes, and I'm already seeing it, right? I absolutely see more athletes being more responsible, more entertainers being more responsible about what they say and how they portray themselves. Um, but we need to do that much more across the board, right? Okay. Especially uh, when we talk about our music and uh, our music industry. Mm. Um, we start to see some of the worst examples for our young people. Yeah, when we watch some of that and yeah. some of the information they're sharing. I'm not a big fan. I don't ever knock anyone's hustle, right? Yeah. So if that's your thing and that's how you're making money and you're feeding your family, I'm happy for you. I wish you well. I just wish you didn't have to hurt us on the way up. Yeah, yeah. Right. That, that's how I feel about that. I'm hoping that they will do better. I have seen them do better over the years. I've been watching this game play out for for a while now. Uh, and I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised and I'm happy about the movement we've made, the gains we've made. I'm looking to see something even more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're on the, we're at the, the cusp of mm-hmm. something great, because like I said, like you just said, 
pretty much and these entertainers and like musicians actors they're superhuman in comparison to us they can say one thing and it will drive and encourage so many people you know and i think that's one of the things that we suffer from as well in the in the black and brown communities is we don't have a lot of idols and at least our idols in the wrong places you know <laughs> our, yeah. our, our favorite people are spitting the worst information to us you know your average rapper for example who the kids seem to eat up their words and you're like oh no no don't follow that guy don't he's yeah. talking he's, he's going to get you into more trouble he's telling you to do things that are going to be bad for you in like the next two or three years don't listen <laughs> but they seem to like it and that seemed to push it's pushed yeah. more isn't it it's to, on purpose to keep us down mm-hmm. and, and 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 stupid or whatever yeah. so um no it's, it's very intentional we see it again when we talk about uh being defined by the definition of others the music that we enjoy it's really just a matter of the music the music that we're allowed to play and share with the world yeah. there's a lot of really good positive music out there that doesn't get the light of day because you know the the the, the industry um owners don't allow it to get airtime sure sure there's there's a lot of that that happens and because of that we feel as though you know all right we're stuck and pigeonholed in this one thing we can only talk about making money buying cars uh the flashy things women in derogatory terms and things like that um that's just what we're told that's what we're allowed to say Mm. we have to continue to develop platforms that allow us to have very free conversations and then start to build each other up in that space and and that's already happening i'm just i'm I'm excited to see where it's all going to go are are you secretly building one yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> quietly quietly we are all we are all making uh inroads to each other um we are creating a mighty network is what we're doing that's great that's great okay so the phrase go forward and give back this is beautiful yeah. i like it it says a lot in so few words you also have another phrase a phrase which is like say less and do more yeah. These are powerful. And, and when you think about it, a lot of us community or society today is basically like, how much can I make someone believe I'm making it? Like if you look at like Instagram, <laughs> look at Instagram, yeah. you got all these chicks and all these guys in there taking pictures next to cars they don't own, <laughs> in houses they don't live in, you know, with all these girls who don't like them, you know? And, and I'm like, what is this? I'm just like, like you say, say less. Go about your business. Like if you look on my site, you'll never see me trying to try to pretend I live a, a particular life. Yep. I'm like, you know, no one knows if I got millions. No one knows if I'm poor. No one knows how mm-hmm. I live. And I just love that. You know, I hit home when you said basically like, say less and do more. Yeah. So with your with your have you got a program that you put people on to? Um, so so right now, um, what I've done is I've been an offline animal my entire life. So all of the businesses that I've built have been actual brick and mortar businesses and people have to go in. Like those things are becoming history now, right? COVID yeah. changed the game for everybody. Everything yeah. is online. Everything is remote. You don't even need anything more than, you know, an office in your house and that's it. You run your yeah. own business. Yeah. So yeah. I've been helping people, you know, one-on-one in a very personal fashion. I am now moving into the online space and providing that same level of of support and effort for others. As I'm doing so, I've I've been working with with individuals privately and I make my calendar available for, as I recognize individuals who are excellent candidates, who are gonna build their company, who are dead serious, who are focused and ready to put in all of that work. And the last piece is you gotta be willing to give back to others. The same way I'm gonna show you how to generate your wealth, you must show someone else how to generate theirs. If you're willing to do that, I can work with you. So I've been doing that on a, on a, on a one-on-one basis, you know, uh, for, for most of the last year. Uh, at the end of this year, I'm going to have a full-blown program that I can, I, can, I, can, I can filter people through in mass. And this way, more people can take advantage of that. I just, for me, I don't find any fun being in places by myself. I don't find any fun or joy in the fact that I'm doing well and others are struggling. I find zero happiness in that. And that's where grow forward and give back came from, Mm -hmm. right? I recognize I was doing really well. I had a wonderful run. 
My children have graduated college, married 25 years. My family is healthy and happy. Why aren't more people experiencing that? Because they need help and they deserve it, but they're just not getting it. So mm -hmm. how do I reach out to those individuals? So that's what I started to create in my space now. Yeah. And I'm operating and currently helping certain individuals, again, one-on-one, -on -one, small group basis, but I'll have something much larger towards the end of the year. Um, another thing that you mentioned earlier was the, you know, say less, do more. Mm -hmm. I think that goes hand in hand with that minimalist uh, lifestyle that we were talking about earlier, right? Yeah. You, just, you just don't require much. Yeah. You don't require much. Your body doesn't require much. You don't need an overabundance of anything, right? Food or drink or anything yeah, else for that yeah. matter. It's very little that we require to sustain our lives moving forward. And if we're able to just take what we need and enjoy ourselves, right? It's not that you have to take the bare minimum, but take what you need, be happy, and then leave for others, share with others, help others get there. I don't find that there is a shortage of anything in this planet yeah. except for sharing and caring. Yeah. That's the only thing that we run short on. There's enough food out there. There's enough money. There's enough land. There's enough mm -hmm. resource for everyone, for everything. It's just those individuals who own it tighten that wrench and tighten that noose, and they kind of make it tighter and more difficult for us to have it. Sharing and caring is what's lacking and missing in this world. But we are a culture of people who we are a, a loving and hugging people. We are yeah. caring and, sh and, and sharing people. So if we have the ability to do that and, and you know, just stay focused in that space, we'll continue to do well. Let me uh, find my charger. I see my battery's about to. <laughs> Don't leave me now, Gary. Don't yeah, leave me nah, now. I just... And I just I just got this computer, so I'm like, all right, no problem. I'll I'll do like they say. Don't overcharge it. Just kind of, uh, you know, allow yourself to allow yourself to, to to run it and be well. Don't overcharge the battery. So I'm kind of being responsible here. All right, so I'm 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 good. We're we're back. We have life again. <laughs> actually, I remember that uh, it was um, a couple of a couple of months ago. Actually, was it? yeah, a couple of months. My computer broke just as I was about to do a podcast. I was just about to go live. My computer gave up the ghost. And then I was there with my phone, one phone here, another phone up here somewhere. And then I'll, yeah, obviously we got the podcast done. It was a bit of a mess, but it didn't matter. So it did matter, but it didn't matter because I had no computer. So everyone kind of understood. And I got this new computer and I've just been charging it constantly. <laughs> yeah, you just leave it plugged in. <laughs> leave it plugged in. Yeah, because that, actually I should have got a desktop. I made a mistake in another laptop. I should have just got a desktop, but I just feel like this is too big desktops but yeah. this laptop never goes anywhere with me so it doesn't really make any difference yeah it would have been better i, I realized that about mine too I, I bought it for the mobility and realized man this thing has never left my home yeah <laughs> it's too expensive i need to leave the home this one okay so first of all abundance yes um that's that's a good thing what you said there abundance and i completely subscribe to the idea that people take way too much more than they need especially you can start with food there's no reason for anybody to be overweight. No, no disrespect to anyone who's overweight, but there's no reason for you to be overweight. And it's like, what, why are you eating when you're not hungry? Yeah. You know, yeah. that doesn't, and why are you eating huge portions? You don't, your body doesn't need it. Eat right, especially like high fiber diets. Eat mm. high fiber diets. You won't be as hungry. Yeah. And you're good to go. That's your the system is healthy, right? Everything yeah. is moving through. Yeah. Right. High fiber, take sugar out of your diet, at least most of it. And I'm yeah. telling you, you'll all be looking with a bikini. You walk around in a bikini in no time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that's it. right. You know, and, and this is, you know, whether you want to look great or not, you'll be really, really healthy. You yeah. have a quality of life like no other. It's not about living forever. It's about having a high quality of life for as long as you do live. Mm -hmm. For me, I recognized that years ago, right? Years yeah. ago, maybe decades ago that I recognized, you know, I want to start eating a little bit lighter, a little bit healthier. Mm -hmm. And I did it one summer and it stuck and yeah. I stay, I did just fruits and vegetables and all of that good stuff. Yeah. Eventually I moved over and, you know, into the vegetarian space and then the yeah. full -blown vegan space. Now I've been a vegan now for, it's gotta be almost 18 years, 18 years. Whoa. 18 years. Optimizing my life. Right. Yeah. So it's not just, you know, at, at the academic space or the professional space, it's at the personal space. It's in yeah. my health. It's in my mindset. It's in my diet. When we start to really optimize ourselves, there's no limit to what we can do. You yeah, know, me sure. personally, 
I wake up and my energy is like at 100. Right? Yeah. So there it is. I wake up and it's right there. I don't have to slowly wake up. It's there. I go through my entire day. I go to sleep and it's still at 100 always at 100. I don't go through the dips, the highs and the lows of the day. I don't uh, eat those things that kind of energize me now and drop me, make me tired later, right? Like uh, I'm I'm always feeding myself living healthy food. Mm-hmm. And as a result, my body reacts accordingly. Yep. You, what you put in is what you get out. And in terms of food and health and diet, my goodness, that's the next, that's the next um, major revolution, by the way. And we're already in the midst of it. Yeah. vegetarianism and veganism, and veganism. yeah, yeah. No. huge for the planet absolutely huge for our Definitely. own personal selves for others for the, the 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 animals that we share this planet with and the land itself the land air and the sea it doesn't have to be polluted as heavy as it's being now yeah sure that's the next major revolution that, sure. that's it yeah i think um, once you get rid of um fossil fuels and everyone starts eating vegetarian and vegan diets because yeah. yeah. i'm a vegetarian too. i've been a vegetarian for 10 years now Awesome. 10 years. I was a vegan for two years, but I kept that's, going that's to tough stick, man. I, I, I don't blame I, you. <laughs> I kept I kept going to Japan and Thailand and Brazil and they kept being they were like, yo, we eat meat in this country. We don't have the yeah. luxury of declining any kind of food. I was like, all right, I, I'll eat that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just telling I was just having this conversation with my brother, right? Like yeah. what I do as 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 much as I like it, as much as I, I really love it, it's a luxury. Like yeah. there are certain places where, listen, man, people are starving to death. They will, they will eat anything in order to put something in. They will eat you in order yeah. to put something in your stomach, right? So th- this is a luxury that we go through. I'm, I'm fortunate for it. I'm happy for it. But <laughs> I recognize it has far-reaching implications, right? Even that, the sheer arrogance though behind is like, I'm not going to yeah. get that piece of meat yeah. if I have to. And there is yeah. the guy down there who's like, yo, give me some food. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We are privileged. I'm happy for it, but I recognize it in the bigger context of the world I live in. Yeah. I might, I might <laughs> have to revisit the vegan side, though. Um, maybe when the kids are grown, I don't know, man. Oh, yeah. I, do <laughs> I, like, they don't, I don't know, man. That's a hard work. All right. So the next thing I wanted to say, you, you mentioned um, putting in a lot of work. Now, see, uh, the problem is in, in our community, Actually, I don't, I don't know if we're hard workers, actually, but there's always this idea that we're lazy. So let's say, for example, we're trying to get lazy people involved as well. How are yeah. we going to motivate the people who, who are kind of like, I don't want to get up today. Like, I've got a couple of people in my family. I ain't afraid to admit it, they're a little bit more on the chill, chill outside. Mm-hmm. How do we motivate these people to, to, to come along and add their voice to the conversation? Yeah, I, I think like everything else, like, you know, People respond to your actions and your representation. So your example is going to be what drives them, even if not at first physically, mentally. They're going to be thinking and watching your example saying, wow, that's that's amazing what he's doing. Wow, look at him also over there. Look at what else he accomplished. That's That's really good. That's really good. Eventually, they will physically you know, from all the invitations, eventually they start to move closer towards us. We have to do a really good job of being that first Mm -hmm. and foremost, right? So once we step into that space, we can't be discouraged or, or even contemplate the ones who aren't willing to join us. They are who they are. There's nothing to be done for them. If they should choose to join us, I hope so. I have a seat waiting for them right here, right next to me. Yeah. But for those who don't, that's totally fine, right? There, we are. We live like a blink of an eye, our yeah. time on this planet. So I don't spend a lot of time supporting those who don't support me. Yeah, and that means friends, family, organizations, uh, the politicians, no. groups, agencies, wherever. Right? No. Don't support those things that don't support you. And in terms of our community, we have to recognize the truth of that. That's a hard conversation to have. Definitely. The reality that not everybody is going to come on board. Oh. Many of them are going to intentionally create conflict, which makes our job more difficult. The good that we're putting into the world, they are actively combating it. Oh. We can only do but so much for them. We can only control our own lives. For those individuals, I recommend give a lifeline, create a pathway if they want to take it, great. If not, let us look backwards 
and concentrate on the younger generation that's coming up because they are the ones that will create the greatest change. And this younger generation is adopting quickly those things that are oftentimes better for us that we've been having trouble breaking down walls and certain systems. This younger generation will immediately leave their class, walk out, protest out in the street and say, we're not going to school until you guys decide to change something. Yep. And they start to drive conversation. I love that about this younger generation. Right? Yeah, they as we feed them, they will continue to heal us. Now that's from the bottom up. As we work on the ones up top who are willing to change, we work top down. And then we converge that dynamic and solve the problem. We are not going to bring everybody. And we have to be okay with just cutting them off mm. and sometimes cutting them out. It's not an easy conversation to have, but we must recognize, and this is in our own life, personal development wise. And this is a space that I excel in and I recommend everybody moves into the personal development space. Mm. Oftentimes when we recognize that which we struggle, the spaces in which we have difficulty, when we really view it and look at it, we recognize that we're holding the stress and the baggage and the problems of other people. Yeah. It's not even our own that's weighing us down. It's the stress and the, and, 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 and the agita and the definitions that other people are putting on us. And we're holding on to it, holding ourselves down. All we have to do is let it go. There it is. It's done. We now float to the top. We're no longer drowning. They own their problems. We own ours. And we keep moving and growing. That's how we get past this. We have to hold ourselves individually responsible, build young, the younger generation growing forward, and then offer a path for the older generation. But recognize many of them are, they are where they are. Yeah, well, that's uh, powerful stuff, man. Powerful yeah. stuff. Which obviously, um, yeah, personal development, I'm with you there as well. That's uh, something, I've been working on that quite a long time, but I recognize like you very young, that something wasn't right. And that mm -hmm. I needed to, like I'd, I think he started off when my mother, she used to smoke when I was a little kid. And I used to look and be like, why do you smoke? What, what is that? We used, to, we used to query out when we was like yep. five. And I was like, I don't know why you do that. It's horrible. And I never forget these conversations. And I carried them all the way through life. I always remember I wanted to be like, I didn't have big goals because I never had anyone to look up to. Like I never had a dad, obviously, and, you know, classic. Yep. So I didn't really, so I was just like, I'm going to try and make some, do a better life than people around me. I'm going to have a better life than people around me. And I do have, without sounding arrogant or like I'm looking down upon them, condescending, that I have a, a decent life in comparison to the life I came from, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's through personal development. Like, like I said, I learned four languages, well, I learned a total of six languages now, but, you know, some of them are disappearing. Even my Portuguese is disappearing, actually, to be fair. Yeah. And um, like, I, obviously, I like to learn. I taught, taught myself computers, you know, I'm very autodidactic. So nice. that's, that's self-development to a T. And I think a lot of people don't have this. A lot of people, if you look at it, like the, the posts on social media and stuff, you're like, yeah, but what are you doing to improve yourself? Is that all you're going to do is tell, how, tell, tell everyone how bad your last relationship was? Is that, is that self-development? Yeah. No. no. For, for certain people, they, they consider it that way. <laughs> Man, yeah. the sharing um but in reality no it's not it, no. It, that, that's not moving the needle forward like I, no. I think about busy work and then i think about needle moving work no. and we keep ourselves busy with things that occupy us you know keep us busy but don't really create dynamic change in our life no. whereas when we're thinking and concentrating on one or two serious events we go through the experience of it and all of a sudden we come out and the outcomes are totally different we are sitting at a whole nother level in our life. We've been able to up level our family in the process. Like yeah. those are the things that are worthwhile conversation wise and pursuing. Those are the spaces we have to do a better job about holding each other accountable. Right. Yeah. So I, I recognize you're growing in a certain space. I show up and hold you accountable. So you keep growing there, yeah. but I don't waste your time keeping you busy with simpleton things that don't serve either one of us. Right. Like yeah. we have to hold each other accountable at the highest level for our growth. Yeah. And that seems to be the word of the day, actually, even the month it's accountability, because mm. it seems like no one seems to be able to be accountable for anything. I didn't do it. It was this guy. It was this guy. It was this guy. It's everyone else's fault. No, it's your sure. fault. Sure. And that's going back to what I said at the beginning of the show. I'm feeling like us black people and to extent brown people too and you know everyone else in the groups, we're allowing ourselves to stay where we are now. And it's time for us to say, no, the opportunities are there. 
mm. we gotta take them. Yeah. If enough of us take them, they'll no one can stop us. You yeah, know, right. five of us who take it, you know, yeah, they can still keep us contained. You know, but if we all take it, mm-hmm. they'll have to be like, oh, we recognize now. We recognize they're doing well. No, we we think about this for a minute. We define ourselves as being the minority in any particular government in any particular country that we're in. Yep. In yep. reality, when you look at the world as a whole, we are the overwhelming the majority. majority. Yeah, overwhelming majority, and yet we define ourselves as the minority in the spaces yep. we occupy. We have to define ourselves differently. We have to come up with the definitions. We have to decide what's in our best interest, and not just what we're told to do. Yeah. Those are the problems. When I think about like generational problems, you know, mm-hmm. uh, heredity and things that we pass on, I think the biggest problem there is bad habits, yeah. more so than anything else. What we pass on to the younger generation is bad habits that mm-hmm. hurt them the greatest. It's yeah. not, uh, you know, my size and my shape and my skin color and all these other things. Um, if if my family is suffering from obesity, it's be, it's not because of the 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 chromosome gene that's running around in my body. It's because of the poor eating habit that yeah. I have adopted, that I have taught my children to adopt, that they teach their children to adopt. Yeah. So yeah. we have to choose better. We have to make better decisions. And in doing that, we start to run into a space where we're doing much better. Yeah. Right yeah. now, um, we we just have to be more determined about how we come across that and how we want to show up in that space. Definitely, man. Definitely, I love it. Okay, last topic for today. Awesome. At least from my side. I mean, if you got something else you want to share, then feel free. But your book, where have our black leaders gone? Yeah. That's that's a that's a topic that's actually close to my heart because that's why I actually started Black Opolis because I was like, you know what? You know, maybe I'm gonna have to try and be a black leader as well. Maybe I'm gonna have to try that because there's none. You know, who was the last one? You know, we can't even take a Barack Obama. We can't even take this guy. You know, we have to say, okay, we're going to write him up. The one before him was probably like Nelson Mandela or something. That was the last guy. Yeah. And that was, we're starving for another one. So where have they gone? Uh, Listen, in in reality, that answer is probably the simplest. When when I think about where have our black leaders gone, they've been assassinated. (laughs) Where have they gone? They've been incarcerated. They have been intimidated from growing into the leaders that they're going to be. Our, when I think about our communities, um, our genius is snuffed out before it ever has the chance to materialize. And this is at the youth level. We have to do a better job of creating a safe space for children to grow into those opportunities, for women to continue to grow and keep our families strong so that when we do grow up, we are the best version of ourselves. I feel that the best version of each one of us is when we recognize our strongest masculine and feminine traits, and then we exemplify them in every capacity in every way. Mm -hmm. Our black leaders are exactly that. And we have to start adopting that and recognizing that and growing into that. We suffer from our own hand we also suffer from the hands of others. We don't necessarily have the ability to change the systemic um, limitations that are imposed on us, Mm. but the self-inflicted wounds we do. And that's what unjustified, where have our black leaders gone? That's what that conversation is about. It's recognizing and having the conversations to build those leaders in our community. And it starts by having these same conversations that you and I are having now with our children as early as possible. Now, you got to be appropriate when you talk to children. It has to be age appropriate. They only, you can't speak to an 18 year old and an eight year old in the same way. You just can't. They don't understand things the same way, but you can start those conversations with the eight year old, making them aware. And as they grow older, they can become more responsible and they will eventually become the lifeline that begins to feed and heal the communities that we are growing from and out of. And that's where our black leaders are. That's where they have gone. And this is how we bring them back to the table. Yeah. I think we can start with the women. Yeah. The women's could be just the, the reason why I think women kind of fly under the radar. They're not quickly as assassinated as men, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they can work out underground. So we're going to make more female black leaders. Yeah. Maybe not so much Camilla Harris. Maybe not her. Mm-hmm. I don't know. She's a little bit suspect, you know? Yeah, but maybe I don't know. I liked I don't know. 
Venus Williams. No, no, not Venus yeah. Williams. You know, he's good, actually. That woman, Osaka, but then again, she doesn't like it in the public. Naomi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> she's another great one. She's a wonderful example. Like when, when I think of her and I think of my daughter, my daughter is 21 now. Yeah. And she looks at her as she is winning her championships. And then when she speaks to the crowd and how thoughtful and caring she is in her language, mm. my daughter sees that, sees the example, and then she mimics it. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Like, that's exactly what we want. We want those examples for our children where they are now trending upwards with positive cycles instead of downwards with negative cycles. Cycles are good as long as they're moving in the right direction. We need to start creating more positive cycles in our community. And when we identify the leaders in our community, especially the women, that's where we start to heal ourselves. Because ultimately, the way we treat our women and children, that tells you a lot about society. And when we look at our society, we treat them terribly. We treat them like second and third class citizens, like things to be used and abused. That's a reflection of who we are. And we have to do better than that. And when I say we, I mean the men of this particular society. We are responsible for that narrative. We keep that dynamic in place and we have every ability to change it. Yeah, man. So with my son, that's exactly what I did with him. I raised him where I just... I don't allow him to tolerate those things that fall into the space of sexual harassment and uh, sexual predation, like a predator, um, the rape culture that exists in our society. I made sure to have these conversations early with him so that he minimized it when he experienced it growing up through school. And then he never promoted that in his own life with his own relationships. No. That's the kind of world we live in. I can't change the world but I have had the ability to change three generations in my time. I have changed mine. I have changed my children's and I know because of their influence, I have changed their children. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Definitely, man. Uh, you're a great guy, man. I must admit, very impressed. Very impressed. <laughs> Thank you. Alistair. I appreciate it. I'm going to give you the floor. I don't know what you want to do. Is there anything else you want to add? Bless us uh -oh. with some, some great knowledge, something like a product you're promoting, anything great. Sure. So I'll, I'll, I'll share a couple things with you. One of the spaces in which I'm occupying now, uh, just because it's timely. Yeah. I spend a lot of time in the social justice space, right? Okay. Um, social justice groups, initiatives, passing laws, especially here in New York. This legislative session, we've been able to pass three particular laws on the books. We're looking to get another two, three, or maybe four squeezed in before the session ends. Right now, we're talking about ending qualified immunity. Ending yeah. qualified immunity, that's the doctrine that law enforcement stands behind to say, it's not my fault. I'm just performing my job. You can't hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. If we remove qualified immunity, they, they can finally be held accountable. They're not going to be paying the bill. The bill yeah. gets paid for by the government, the state, the agency. But the individual gets held accountable for his actions, and he or she can be removed. I'm currently working on bills and spaces like that with social justice groups on, on initiatives like that, because that's what changes the, the atmosphere in our communities. And if we have the ability to do that, now we start to create movement and opportunity for others. So for anyone listening, see where you can help. It doesn't have to be the biggest thing. It doesn't have to be the smallest. Just help. Offer your assistance and watch others grow because of your benefit, because of what you're contributing. This is how we grow forward and give back. And if everybody does that little bit, we will immediately start to see the difference in our communities, in our children, and more importantly, their happiness and the outcomes for them as they continue to navigate the world they're growing into. Yeah, man, that's that's great stuff, man. Great stuff. And definitely, like I said, like I said, we need to get the police. Accountability. These two words don't, don't go together, you know, but they need to start getting together. They must get linked and, you know, because there's too many police doing stupid stuff, not just in America, Europe yeah. too, That's everywhere right. else. So um, That's right. It's, it's yeah. all born. It's all born from a system of privilege. Yeah. Right. And, you know, very, very easily we understand the idea of white privilege because it's a conversation of topic that has been exhausted and continues to be spoken about. That's where this unaccountability in law enforcement mm -hmm. is grown from, from their white privilege, making sure that they are able to escape judgment, escape accountability 
even when they commit wrongdoings. We have to stop it at the most simplest form for us to start healing and growing together as a nation, together as a country, together as a planet. Yeah, man. Okay, good. Then wait, I want to check it. I'm just checking your website quickly. You got a couple of books. Yeah, do you write any more books or just one book? Uh, no, just so this one book is what I have out now. I am currently mm -hmm. writing my second book. It's going to be ready for um, for February next year. This okay. one opens the door to some conversations very politely, amicably, right? Yeah. Digestibly, right? It's palatable. The yeah. next book, the next book is five. The so next book is heavy. It's a lot more science and data-based. It dives into the conversations that most people avoid. And those are the conversations we must have if we're willing to heal our communities. Definitely. All right, then. Um... <clears throat> That's, that's the end of the show. Can uh, you let me know where we can find you? What's your, give me your handles, Facebook. Yeah, I appreciate Instagram. that. Like this, I always mess this up. Thank you so much for asking, right? <laughs> uh, so you can find me at, uh, you know, in the, in the Instagram space, at Gary O'Valley. I'll go ahead and spell that. Sounds fancy, look, looks fancy, <laughs> but looks fancy, yeah, yeah. just Gary, right? G-A-H-R-E-Y-O-V-A-L-L-E. -E. So at Gary O'Valley, you can find me Instagram, Facebook, GaryO'Valley.com is my website. You can go on Amazon.com to find Unjustified, Where Have Our Black Leaders Gone? That's the book. It's out there. It's available. Go pick it up. It's a quick read. Leave a review. Let's start changing the world together. I'm going to add you now. Don't forget to click accept. Love it. I love it. <laughs> accept and follow. My brother. Thank you. Hey, can I get you back on for just before you write your new book or maybe around... Uh, let me see. I need to figure out maybe around the end of the year sometime or a couple of months. Absolutely. I'll let you know. I'll write you and then or I'll write you an assistant. Wait, how, how you got an assistant? <laughs> that, thankfully, my publisher has someone that was able to do all of this legwork for me. I'm getting ready to slowly start picking up that myself. But thankfully, I had someone who can start that process. I need, I need a publicist too. Um, yeah. send my details along. I need yeah. one. <laughs> all right. Yo, Gary O'Valley, the, the man with a great name. Yes. We'll be talking again soon, yeah? Yes, sir. Astalio, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. And uh, I can't wait to see you again. Yeah, man, for sure. See you later, man. Good night. Yes, Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.